Hello, I want to give you a little update here around the uh, topic of the CS1 game engine. Uh, it's a game engine that is going to be completely revamped here in a few months. It's going to take a while, but I've been doing a lot of uh, research and diagrams and putting together a system for development as well. Um, I just want to share a few particulars with you. Well, ultimately, um, the engine aims to enable really quick prototyping of uh, VR, web VR games um, that are multiplayer. If you want them to be multiplayer, they're not going to be um, multiplayer by default. They're going to have a lot of uh, just really, uh, really nice uh, options in terms of uh, variety of games. You know, you're going to be able to do third person. Um, you're going to be able to uh, do some really uh, nifty peer-to-peer um, -peer stuff as well in it. There's a lot of good ideas floating around that I've been kind of stress testing it now. With I'm um, putting, I'm currently putting forty thousand tetrahedrons to the test with a custom cursor type of situation that I'm designing. I still have to add uh, the the click handling on it. But I wanted to kind of do my own cursor rather than just using the A-frame cursor. I, of course, have read through the A-frame cursor and I'll be borrowing from that. And I won't be using certain things like the fuse, you know, attribute, you know, for fuse clicking and things like that. There's definitely aspects of the A-frame cursor I'm not going to try to put together. But let me just share with you a little bit of what I have here. So I have... Uh, pretty much a development system set up here in Glitch. I have it on my local machine as well, but I like to put it up here in Glitch so I can train my students. I teach high school. I like to train them how they can do some uh, project management and uh, you know publish NPM modules and things like that. So without further ado, let me just show you this uh, current stress test. It's ridiculous. It doesn't really work that well, but it's amazing that it works at all. I mean, just watch this. First of all, here we go. Whoops. Did I just break it? No, I didn't. No, there we go. I'm sorry. Okay. So what we got going on here is 40,000 tetrahedrons. And I got a, a ray caster with this uh, kind of laser going on here. And the Raycaster is actually checking against everything. The ground, you can see it's it's getting the ground fine, but it, it's so flickery right now because it's testing against all of those mesh instances of those, those 40,000 tetrahedra that are in the sky as well. I could do some culling uh, based on the... The frustrum. I could do all kind of things just to reduce it, but I'm just like totally stressing it out right now. Right now, it's like looking amazing that it's even picking that up. So it, you see how it's holding the the basically the sprite, the PNG sprite that I have at the end of the laser. It's holding it right pretty steady there. It's flickering because it's totally getting stressed out. Look at that. There it is on this, and it, now it's battling with the computation of the um, transparent transparency so this is showing you how to really stress out the transparency because it's a transparent uh, component that it's against the jukebox I don't even have the jukebox totally rigged up for clicking it as you can tell but if you look at that right there it's amazing that it can even hold that sprite the end of the laser on that and still be able to read the, the text through the little um, little sprite at the end of this. Now if I go over here to this other object, again it's able to hold the barely. I mean look at this. Let's, let me get one of these uh, tetrahedra over here so I can show you. It would actually hold it on it. Watch this. I'll get this. Look at that. It's holding the beam on that object. On that one tetrahedron. Right? There's four faces on that tetrahedron that one tetrahedron, and there's 40,000. So that's 160,000 faces just of the tetrahedra. And look how far away they are and so forth. Look how far it's letting that ray propagate. 
because that ray has to propagate the whole way through and I'm letting it propagate. So I'm not even just like stopping the ray at a really short distance. I'm letting it, look at that, hitting that right there. Look at it, it's hitting that, that tetra ray. That's ridiculous. I mean, there's all kind of artif really weird blinking artifacts and so forth, but it's just amazing that it's doing anywhere near half decent with so much geometry that it's trying to trying to hit. This is ridiculous. So, oh yeah, I also put together my, I'm, I'm happy with my follow cam right now. I like it better than any other um, camera I've seen so far for a follow cam in the, um, you know, third person follow cam. If you notice how that it's doing a lot of the kind of motion uh, that you might be accustomed to. I mean, just with regular other games that you might play. And I'll just run a jump here character up into those. You can see I'm hitting, if you look close, you can see I'm hitting boom. Some of those things with the laser, it's just ridiculous. And I'll jump up in here again, boom. Bing. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you. I just thought that was so amazing that it's gonna even have anywhere near kind of something like the performance that you would want. It's just ridiculous. I just think it's truly ridiculous that this can even kind of work with 40,000. Of course, I'm not going to. I uh, Let me just tell you, the mesh instances, I, I would typically use like the mesh instances more than likely. I mean, most I can use them for anything. We'll eventually pass a whole bunch of different geometries in, like each one would be like a GLTF model. But most of the time I can see myself using like 40,000 mesh instances for like just putting little bunches of grass on the ground or something and spreading them out, having a little variety in the, in the colors of the grass or something. And maybe adding just a little bit of, uh, uh, in, in the vertex shader, a little tiny, just, a little bit of uh, displacement variation uh, amongst the vertices on the different uh, grasses and things like that. But in, in, in that case, I definitely wouldn't be letting them get hit by any raycaster objects. I think it's just ridiculous that I can start to get some, any type of performance with this, this custom uh, laser, which I'm going to make it into a laser cursor here pretty soon, but it's just ridiculous ridiculous yeah look at that try to well I'm going to sign off here let me just boom take care